excited for today's video this is something I have never done before and I really hope we're gonna love it today's video is going to be a cozy fall reading vlog I have been obsessed with reading this past month I want to kind of share that love with you guys I also got a request to do a reading vlog but I thought it would be fun to put my own kind of spin on it and combine it with another passion of mine which is budgeting so this video is going to be a fall cozy reading vlog plus my mid-month check-in so we're doing our budgeting our reading today and it's just oh it's gonna be so perfect in preparation for this video I watched one reading vlog. I didn't want to be too influenced by what other people are doing and feel like I have to like copy them. So I only watched one from a girl named Sarah. I forget her last name, but I like instantly subscribed. I'll put her name here on the screen. And it just got me so excited for this video. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Zoe. I would love for you to subscribe. I'm 27. I live in Montreal and I just love posting videos about real life, real emotions, real money talk, all of that. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like, give it a a thumbs up it really supports my channel now in the spirit of openness and honesty I have to say I'm gonna be a bit of a downer for a minute I've really been struggling with my mental health these past couple of weeks I just have not mental health not on fleek we could say um, I'm kind of making light of it right now but I've just felt very like down in the dumps I feel like I've been in a just sort of a never-ending slump and honestly you guys little bit of like the consistent light and joy has really been reading. I've been reading before bed and as soon as I wake up basically every single day. And those have really been my moments of like peace, getting out of my head because it feels like every other moment of the day, my head is just spiraling. My thoughts are going all over the place, just thinking about work, thinking about, you know, <laughs> so anything, like literally anything. My mind is just constantly running and so, moments of reading have just brought me a lot of peace and also a lot of joy and I think that's why I'm just like so passionate about it right now so however you're feeling whatever you are up to I hope that this video can bring you some coziness and some comfort give yourself a big hug from me to you we have the egg sweater back I had to bring it out for maximum cozy vibes and with all of that being said let's get into this vlog we are going to start with the budgeting portion because I always feel like a weight is off of my shoulders when I do my budgeting normally I like to like make a tea make a fun drink but I really need to work on drinking more water so I'm gonna pour myself a big glass of water and head over to the desk let's budget month money check-ins every single month and they really did help me stick to my budget but also just feel better about money overall because I was really taking some dedicated time it usually only takes like 15 minutes when I do this routine um, just some dedicated time to really look at my budget kind of fell off of doing it over the summer and I am so glad that now that it's fall getting back into the habit of doing these mid-month check-ins If you guys are familiar with my videos if you know my money content you know that I do the cash envelopes I also use a digital budget tracker and if you are new to the budgeting game it can seem very overwhelming it's like what is she doing she has all these different accounts like how does she manage it it all looks more complicated than it is so in this video I wanted to show you guys just really how short and sweet it can be to have a little budgeting check in with yourself and also just talk about how rewarding it is when you are helping yourself along your personal finance journey so that's what we're going to be doing today I need to look at some of my receipts track my spending and see how I'm doing with the monthly budget that I set for myself now right in front of me I have my cash envelopes I also have my digital budget tracker I'm going to be walking you guys through how I use it today I want to thank the line for sponsoring this portion of the video I love the line so much they have been a game changer in my personal finance journey and in finally feeling like I have gotten control of my budget the line is a stationary company it's a small business based out of Vancouver they make all kinds of products I am going to be highlighting the budget tracker today but they also make cash envelopes they make planning inserts it's just an amazing shop 
I am also launching a product with them. It is coming out early November. I am so excited. I know you guys are gonna love it. You can subscribe to the Lions newsletter if you wanna be one of the first people to hear about the launch and to be able to purchase it. The hints that I have given are that it is a physical product that you guys can hold in your hands and you can use it every single day. So, so excited for that. Let's get into this mid-month check-in. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my cash envelopes. This is the folio with all the envelopes that I carry around with me every single day. My whole budget is in here. You guys can see I have one receipt right there. And then I'm just going to go through, I always keep my receipts in the envelopes. So I just check and see. I know that there's a bunch in groceries. So I'm gonna just take them out. In terms of how I'm feeling about my budget so far for October, I was feeling great up until this weekend when I looked inside my groceries envelope and I was like, oh my gosh, I have spent so much money. I've basically almost finished my groceries envelope and we're only at the midpoint of the month. So that gave me, I'm not going to lie, it gave me a lot of anxiety. Um, I was like, fretting about it yesterday. I was fretting about it this morning. It's not a good feeling. However, once I finish up this mid-month check-in, I want to make a plan for how I'm going to handle the rest of my groceries moving forward, knowing that a girl's got to eat and I'm probably going to go over budget. So I have three paper receipts right here and I also did make a few purchases online. So I will show you guys how I input those online purchases as well as how I reconcile them with cash if I choose to do so. So let's dive into this budget tracker now starting off we have this dashboard view this is all auto populated which is really really nice you don't have to worry about making any of these graphs yourself the spreadsheet will do it for you as you input your spending as you input your income as you input everything into the budget tracker throughout the weeks and months this page will auto populate this is a copy so these are not my actual numbers you guys can see it's still set to 2022 but i just wanted to give you a glimpse at what it looks like so that's the yearly summary. These next two tabs, the expense categories and the expense log, I will show you with my own numbers. Then you have a individual tab for every single month. They always look the same and then it's you who goes in and fills in a few of these boxes. Coming back to these expense categories, we are now in my personal budget tracker. These you really only have to fill out once, but if a new one pops up, you can come in and add it. So you guys can see I have groceries, home, treat yourself, Maggie, coffee, dining out, blah, blah, blah. A lot of these are categories that I do my cash budget with, but some of these like vacation and car stuff, these are things that I will spend on credit or debit. Any category that you wanna to use to organize your budget, you put it in here and I will show you how these come into play in a moment. Then you have your expense log. This is where you're going to spend the majority of your time because this is where you come in and input all of your purchases. Right now, what we are seeing is just for October, I have hidden the previous 10 months of the year. You guys can see if I open this up, there's like lines and lines and lines of all of my purchases throughout the year. So I just keep them hidden so that it's nice and clean. You put in the date, you put in the category. So that tab that I just showed you, it pre-populates this drop-down list. You get to choose. Then I just put in a quick description. So did I buy, so like here I bought food for Maggie. I bought groceries for Thanksgiving. Then what is really cool is that everything you input into this expense tracker will auto populate over here in your monthly tab. So this is the tab for the month of October. You guys can see my budget here. All of the categories are there. You just copy paste them uh, into this list. You input what you budget. So what you would ideally like to spend for the month. And then in this green column, this is all auto populated from where you entered it in that other tab. So it really takes away a lot of the work for you. And then you can easily come here and compare, okay, I budgeted $450 for groceries. I've already spent 225. I can see that I have $224 left. So I really love this because I do cash envelopes rather than counting out the cash in my envelopes, I can just come here and see how much I have left. But if you don't want to do cash envelopes, this is another way to set some parameters around your spending, track your spending, see where your money is going. It's so helpful. Also in this tab, you can track your income. So you can put in your expected. And then for me, I get paid kind of once a month. I get paid sporadically throughout the month, but I input everything at the end of the month. So I will come in here and put the actual amounts that I got paid. 
If you get paid bi-weekly, you can separate your bi-weekly paychecks. Then you have this section for your savings. So I put all of my money into savings once again at the end of the month, but I like to write out my goals. So I will have an emergency fund goal, a vacation fund goal, one month ahead, TFSA, RRSP, and dream first home, which is my FHSA. So then in the budget category, I write down at the beginning of the month how much I would like to contribute to these savings accounts. Some of them are investments, but for me, I lump them all together. And then at the end of the month, I'll come in here and input exactly how much I put into those savings. If you have debt, if you have loans that you're working on paying off, you can input those here. You can put the goal that you would like to contribute, then the actual. Up here you have your bill payments. This is where you can put in anything that is recurring. So I have my home rent, my office rent, car insurance, and office insurance. When I was making payments towards my car loan, I would also put these here. Um, I didn't put them in the debt section for whatever reason. I just considered it a bill payment and put it in there. I also love this section down here, the monthly goals. So any of your personal finance goals, you can write out in this list and then it's super satisfying to be able to check it off. And lastly, you have this little section for investments. Like I said, I keep my investments kind of tied in with my savings, but you could keep them separate if you prefer. So you guys can see how simple that is. The way that I use this budget tracker is I look at it at the beginning of the month, I put in my goals, I put in my estimated income, I put in my budget. Then about once a week, I input my receipts. I think in a perfect world, I would do this every day or every other day, but really it's about once a week and it takes maybe 10 minutes max. Oftentimes I like to do it with like TV in the background or music, just make it like a cute, cozy budgeting activity. Then I look at it again at the midpoint and then once again, well, at the end of the month is also the beginning of the month. So really only twice a month, I'm like sitting down looking at this budget tracker and then all the other time I spend in it is inputting my expenses in that one single tab. So that's my little run through. This budget tracker is so affordable. It is such a good way to kind of kickstart your personal finance journey. You can change the currency so it can be used around the world and it is available for instant download on the Lions website. You can make a copy, use it again and again year over year. You don't need to start in January. You can start in November, you can start in December, whenever you want. You can literally start in the middle of October <laughs> if you want. So now let's input these receipts and I will be able to see exactly how much and where my spending is at at this midpoint of the month. So I want to show you guys what I do when I buy something on credit, but it should have come out of my cash budget. So this receipt right here is for two dirty chai lattes. I went for a walk with my boyfriend, did not bring my cash envelopes because I was like, I'm not buying anything. And then it was like the most perfect crispy fall day and I caved and I just had to have a dirty chai. So I got one for myself, got one for him. The total came out to $18. That is astronomical like that's insane so i am going to go into my coffee envelope and basically pay myself back to ensure that i stick to my budget so here is the coffee envelope it was 18 dollars, so we'll just make it an even 20. then i have an envelope called spent on credit so i will put that 20 dollars into this envelope that way I cannot touch it. It's out of my coffee budget, so I know that I only have $20 left. A little bit more, because I have some loose change. At the end of the month, I take this envelope, I take this cash, and I will deposit it into the ATM and use it to pay off my credit card. It's so helpful, it helps me stay on budget. If you guys are doing cash envelopes, I highly recommend having a spent on credit envelope. So that we can get rid of this coffee receipt. 
Now that wasn't the only thing I spent on credit this month. I did make a purchase from Indigo, which is so fitting because this is also a reading vlog. I spent $115 and that money is basically separated between books and the home category. I will show you guys what I bought later in this vlog. So although it was one lump purchase, what I did was inside my budget tracker, I separated the purchases that were home so that they would come out of the home category and then books to come out of the books category. Now, I don't have cash envelopes for books, so that will just go onto my credit card, but I do have a home budget. So let's go find it. Here is the home envelope. And I spent $55. I think I have a 10 in some of my... <laughs> no, these are all empty. What the heck? Okay, one 10, two fives. So I'm trading around some of the cash. So my home budget was $60, two, four, 50, 60. But I spent 50 on credit. So 40, 50, meaning I have $10 left, which will go back into its envelope. And that $50 will go into spent on credit. Then I can go into my budget tracker. And since I have reimbursed myself, I will take away the spent on credit tag. So now it's only those books that I did not reconcile that have the spent on credit tag in my budget tracker. So to wrap this up, taking a look at my expense summary, most of my categories are on track, except for groceries. I have $80 left to last me the next two weeks of the month. That honestly scares me quite a bit. <laughs> However, I think what I am going to do is actually order HelloFresh for myself. That way it's contained, like I know exactly how much it's gonna cost. Plus JS is gonna be traveling for work. HelloFresh will be my savior. I find it really hard to motivate myself to cook when I'm alone. So at least HelloFresh will make it super easy. I don't have to worry about going to the grocery store or anything like that. So I think that's how I'm gonna fix this budgeting problem. Of course, it's going to involve going over it. Plus HelloFresh is more expensive than normal groceries but it's just gonna make it like nice and easy and then I don't have to think about it as much. So that is my solution. You guys can also see, I did go over by $40 in the home category. This was like an emergency Walmart purchase that I didn't really budget for. It was like phone charger and like just random crap. Anyways, as you can see, everything else is on track. I am especially proud of my dining out category. I have barely touched it this month and I think it will be amazing if I can keep it that way. Same with coffee. Like I was thinking of going out for coffee for this video, but I was like, let's just make tea at home and read and be cozy at home. So that's a wrap on my mid-month budgeting check-in. It always takes longer when I'm like talking about it on camera, but if you guys do this at home, you'll see it probably takes like 15 minutes max. With that being said, let's get into the reading portion of this vlog. I am so excited to just get cozy. I always feel better once my budgeting is done. It's always like a weight off of my shoulders, reduces a lot of my anxiety. Just looking at my budget head on, it's never as bad as you think it is. And there's always a solution. Like I was so stressed about the groceries thing. You know what, just get the hell of fresh. It is what it is. So let's get to reading. All right, now that the budgeting is out of the way, we get to talk about books. I'm gonna update you guys on the books that I have read recently. Then we will sit down and get cozy, read all of that. And then we'll wrap up with my TBR. So since we last spoke about books, I think I was reading Eat, Pray, Love. I had almost finished it. I enjoyed reading this book for the most part. Then I watched the movie and it really gave me like a new lens on the book. It made me dislike it. I feel like there's a lot of conversation about this book and like, I don't know, I went down like a rabbit hole. So anyways, I don't wanna be too negative, but yeah, I don't, I, I really have mixed feelings about this book. That's all I'll say. After finishing Eat, Pray, Love, I got into the fall mood by reading The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I have had this book on my bookshelf for years and years and years. I just never felt drawn to it for whatever reason. This was a hand-me-down from my aunt and I decided it was finally time to read it. I'm so glad I did, you guys. This book is excellent. Technically it's a children's book, but honestly, I find sometimes children's books are like better written or written better than adult books because they use like big words that are easy to understand because it's for kids. I don't know. I just thought this book was so cute and amazing. It's a little bit thick, but you honestly fly through it. And he won the Newbery Medal for this book. So really, really love it. Definitely it made me want to read more Neil Gaiman. I ordered Coraline, which you guys may have seen that movie. The book Coraline is written by him. So I ordered that from the library. Loved this book. 
great, great book for the fall. <laughs> Switching gears, I then read Hear the Wind Sing and Pinball 1973 by Haruki Murakami, very, very popular and famous author. These are the first two books that he ever wrote and they're technically like novellas or short novels. They're very, very short and I enjoyed reading them but nothing happens. Like nothing happens. I literally thought that everything had to be like some double meaning, but I don't even think it was because I looked it up after and it was just like, anyway, this author has a cult following. I just, it's not exactly my favorite type of book. So would I read another book from Murakami? Yes, right now, probably not. Now I am reading and what we're going to be reading today, I'm hoping to finish it is A Dreadful Splendor. This is one of the best books that I have read in a long, long time. Perfect for the fall, perfect for spooky season. You guys need to read this book. I also love that the author B.R. Myers is Canadian. This, this book slaps. It Honestly, I can't say anything else. It slaps so hard. So I am about this much through. I'm hoping to finish it in today's vlog. Oh, I need to stop talking and start reading. I will tell you guys more about this book after I read it for a little bit. Let's let's start reading. So let's get into all of the cozy vibes. We are going to start by making a tea and then I am going to, <laughs> like, are you okay? I am going to join Maggie here on the couch and we will get to reading. fun just like spending the afternoon reading i've got this like jazz ambiance music playing on the tv highly recommend i'm under this blanket this is one of the things i mentioned from indigo uh, that i bought it's like this faux fur throw it's so soft and cozy i'm just feeling so at peace right now it's amazing i have about 60 pages left in this book i thought i would take a break to tell you more about it like i said before it is one of the best books i've read in a long time I would classify this as a thriller kind of mystery. It's not horror, like it's not scary, but it's definitely spooky. This book is about a fake spiritualist in like old timey London, 1800s, I believe. Yeah, 1850s. So she's basically a fake. She's kind of like a con artist and she gets thrown in jail and someone shows up to bail her out and bring her to this massive estate in the countryside by the sea. Basically a bunch of stuff has been going wrong at this estate and this man wants her to perform a seance. He knows she's a fake, but he wants her to basically trick the staff and the people that live in the house. So he brings her there and she's kind of living there for a few weeks leading up to the seance. She's a fake and she does not believe in ghosts, but then all these spooky things start happening. There are a million twists and turns and it's really spooky. It leaves you wondering the entire time. I'm still wondering, I'm not at the end yet. Leaves you wondering whether like it's a real ghost, like is the spooky ghosty stuff real or is someone for lack of a better word, with her. So many creepy things, so many mysteries. You don't know 
anyone's true intentions. You have no idea what's going on, but the setting is an old English estate where it's always raining. I mean, does it get better than that for fall? Amazing writing, very, very descriptive. And I love a book that really keeps you on the edge of your seat right until the end. I'm so curious to see how this ends. The other thing I love about this book is there are diary entries sprinkled in. So we're kind of learning more that the narrator doesn't know yet. It's, it's so good. So here's the cover once again, highly recommend you guys check it out. They might have it at your library or you can order it. I'm definitely going to finish this today. Like I said, I have about 60 pages left. I think I read about one page per minute, which I feel like for the reading community is kind of slow, but I would say I have about an hour left to finish this book. I am really hungry, so I'm gonna take a food break and then we will get back to reading. But I'm gonna turn this music back on because it's so good. Look at that. So yesterday I went apple picking and then I made apple crumble right after. This one got a little bit burnt. I had also made like a mini one and it tasted so good. So I'm gonna like eat this burnt part cause I wanna give some of it to some family members. So I'm gonna eat this burnt part right now. And then of course we need ice cream to go with it. As I was eating and reading there, I just got to like what I think is going to be the part where shit like fully goes down in the book because they are going to finally perform the seance. And I'm like, okay, I gotta get back on the couch. I gotta get like ready for this because I just have a feeling like everything's about to go down and all of my questions will be answered and I'm so excited. been the best afternoon so many hours just spent being cozy and reading i feel like it's just this was just exactly what i needed it seriously felt so good like this was such good self-care plus doing the budgeting like i said it's always a weight off of my shoulders i just really feel so like cozy inside and out right now uh this book was amazing i definitely did not see the end coming so yeah all i can do is recommend it again so good i thought it would be fun to wrap up this video by sharing with you guys like what's next on my reading list so up next are two books that i got from the library i mentioned in another video that i wanted to do like children's book fall or like young adult uh books this is ink heart i read it over and over again when I was like, I don't know, younger. I, I don't know what age I was obsessed with it. So I got this from the library and I think this is gonna be my next read. Also from the library is this book called The Ghost Woods. I just picked it up because it was on display at the library. It looks so good, but it's another like spooky book. And I think, I think I need a break from spooky. I wanna like, I don't wanna associate this book too much with the one I just read. So I think I'm gonna do this one in between and then I will read this. Because they're from the library, I do have a bit of a deadline with them. So I have to like hurry up. Then the book that I bought from Indigo at the same time as when I bought this blanket is Fourth Wing. Everyone's reading it, everyone's raving about it and they had the hardcover on sale. I did order it from the library, but I'm like so far in line that I was like, I'm just gonna buy it. I just really wanted to be a part of the hype. So I think I'm gonna bring this one with me on my trip to Arizona. 
I feel like this would be a good one to have with me there. And lastly, I have Demon Copperhead here. This one may wait. I feel like this one doesn't need to be read in the fall, but I'm really excited to read this book as well. Last time I talked about books, it was in my monthly reset and you guys gave me so many good requests. The other one that I have like really on my wish list is A Court of Thorns and Roses. Uh, I'm just in line, like I'm in the waiting list for it from the library. I think I'm gonna go to some of the thrift shops and see if maybe I could find a copy of it there. I don't know. But that was one that came really highly recommended and I love getting you guys' book recommendations. So please leave them for me down below. I would also love for you guys to let me know what you thought of this video in the comments. Do you like it? Do you like the budgeting and reading? Should we keep them separate? Like, let me know your feedback. If you wanna see videos like this again, I would 100% love to film another one because this was simply amazing. Anyways, I am going to stop talking now and end this video here. I wanna thank you guys once again for spending this afternoon with me. It was so peaceful. It was really just so good for the soul. So hope you loved it. I love you guys so much and I will see you all in my next video.